Hey everyone, Thought Safe here with Team 16 Bomb Squad. And let me tell you guys something. This explosive team right here it has such a unique system. An angled elevator, able to go both sides, really a unique intake, and they'll be able to talk to us here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first base camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsored Camp Fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Andy Marcus Parts and Products designed specifically for First Through Box competition and First Tech Challenge teams. Many Andy Mark staff are first alumni, mentors, and event volunteers. Visit andymark.com for all your educational robotics needs. Aiden, let's start with you. Tell us about your intake. What do you guys use for it? Your wrist as well. Talk us through it. Okay. So we have uh, two halves here with belted wheels, uh, each powered by a Falcon. This allows us to back drive them to both center and uh, retain pieces with these really low durometer flexible wheels. Um, it is two position. So this is uh, the piece for the cone, I mean the cube, sorry. If I can see that. So there's a presence sensor in the back there, which will detect if there's a game piece. And if so, it will back drive these wheels to again, keep it in. So as we're going across the field, we don't have to worry about dropping, losing pieces, whatever. If you can spit it out. And then we can close the intake to grab a cone. That's and then if we wanted to uh, step back, perhaps, can you set it to uh, medium? Okay. And when we score, so we preset and drop the cone on. That is a great segue to talk to you. Talk to us about your elevator. Olivia, tell us more about this elevator. I love this just adjustability, so tell us more about it. So we have a two-stage elevator. Um, we have the two stages that go up as well as our carriage, and then we have our sponsor name, Baxter. Um, so the elevator will go up. It's all presets. Um, we do have a manual function, but we continue to do presets to make it as smooth. Um, our motion, motion profiling, we move in a trapezoidal pattern versus a square. So whenever we start to go up, it, it gradually increases the speed and then levels out and then goes back down gradually. So there's no harsh movements on our motors and our mechanics. Um, it's not a turn on immediately and then go off immediately. It goes in a trapezoidal pattern. Um, our set positions, if, yeah, Whew, I don't want anybody. Okay, so our set positions right now it's at stow. Um, it keeps the intake inside of the robot. Nothing can get hit and it's safe. And then we have our ground pickup. Um, we have two different ground pickups. This is our cone. Um, it'll level out with the cone on the field so that it can level it and catch it right there. And then if, I'll go back up. And then our cube actually will angle down. Uh, we had problems with it hitting the rollers up here. And so this actually gets it from the top instead and causes it to catch it almost immediately. And then we have our scoring uh, mid. How it goes up depending on where, uh, what field element we have. If we have a cone or if we have a cube, it'll be angled down. And if we have a cone, it'll be angled up on the wrist. And then high, it's just a little bit higher, but it extends along with our IGUS chain. Um, it goes, it follows with the elevator and it'll keep all of our wires and pneumatics for the intake as well as all of our motors inside on the IGUS. Do you guys have a, a custom, like a, a wait at the end to make sure your robot doesn't tip over. How do you guys can make sure your robot doesn't tip when it's extension like this? Yeah, so our battery is actually in the back of our robot. And so it's back here. Okay, I'm gonna bring the, Ooh. sorry. Okay. So our battery is in the back of our robot. Um, we have a very mid CG uh, for center of gravity, but um, we have our battery as well as our bumpers are weighted. So we added bumper weight almost as much as we could, I think. And it keeps our um, keeps us from tipping. We did a lot of testing on that. That's just, yeah, make, this this game has a lot of tipping robots this year, so yeah. especially with the open field. Now, with your amazing elevator, let's quickly talk about your machining. Ivan, you have really great machining. Tell us about it. Yeah, so 
we have our own machine shop in the sh in the shelter. It's how we call old place where we do stuff, bomb shelter, because they're bomb squad. Uh. So what do we do? We have we have we will do a lot of stair printing and a lot of CNC machining. So what? If, so for example, the, um, pretty much the entire intake was CNC on our CNC gearing machine. We used Omnia CNC. So we pretty much cut our entire robot first, and then we do machining. So most of the but most of the aluminum plates and our robots have been machined in our shop, like all of those ones. There's only like two plates that has been machined at the different machine shop of our sponsor because we just didn't have enough machine capacity to do it. And also we do a lot of 3D printing. So all those pieces have been 3D printed. Some of them were 3D printed at our own shop. Some of them were 3D printed at our sponsor shop because, I mean, we didn't have enough just capacity to do it. Now but let's talk about your style right here, these LEDs. Yeah. Oh, and <laughs> I want to mention like one more thing. Go ahead. We really like our robot to be pretty. And so we do a lot of powder coating. So all those like, all this blue and black thing you, things you see, they are powder coated. So yeah. And another thing I'm making a robot look pretty is LEDs. So. Yes, Emma, tell us more about these LEDs. I love this display right here. I know you have a display in the back as well, but tell us all about the LEDs. How, what are their functionality? Right, so um, we have several different patterns. Um, I'll start from the beginning as how our robot would work. But um, whenever we have no communication, um, we will show a like sparkling pattern similar to this one. And it's yellow and purple to represent the cubes and cones. And then once we gain communications, it changes to a different pattern based off our alliance color. This lets our drive team know that we're ready for the match, as well as letting the people in the stands, the scouters, know that we're good. Um, there's a back matrix up here, and um, whenever we become uh, connected to the robot, but we're in disabled, it will read um, as like ready for match. And then, um, yeah, there it is. And then once we enable the robot, it'll switch to a different pattern on the LEDs. Um, this serves two functions: one as um, helping like make sure that everything's running correctly in the match, but also um, keeping our pit crew safe because they know when the bot is enabled and when to not have their hands inside the robot. Um, the matrix up there also says uh, tele-operated period whenever um, it is in this mode. Um, the LEDs give us a lot of feedback throughout the match, yeah. one of which being our part requests that we use to talk to our human player. Um, so we can request a cube and it will show the image that way, if we're already up close to the substation and have to change last second, they can see without having to see the bottom of our robot. And then um, we also have our cone. Um, and these actual images on it allow us to um, communicate with other human players as well as our own. That way we can be versatile if there's people in the way. Um, and then we have a, so uh, our key and part sensor, um, that was talked about with the intake, lets us know whenever there is a part there and it will flash twice, letting the uh, drive team know that we have the part and we're able to go to score it. Um, and then finally, in the last 20 seconds of the match, the LEDs will show green, um, giving an indication of time, and in the last 10 it will show red. Um, and then once we go to end game, here you have the button. <laughs> Once we go to in-game, if you can see over here, the uh, the LEDs will level with us as we go to balance. To... That way wow. it shows our drivers whenever we're balanced and whenever we still need to go a little bit more. And then um, our elevator extension on these vertical strips, whenever we extend, they will go up with it and back down with it. So this, um, it's just basically a visual appearance thing. It makes our robot look clean and uh, smooth with all of our movements and just ties everything together. Thank you for taking the time to walk us through your robot. Really excited to see what guys will do at, this, uh, at Worlds. So good luck to you guys. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first-based camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information.
Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.